This is good? Okay. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, so let's get going. So remember the 20 extra years you added to your life through the clean, healthy living. Well, these are them. So that's not enough. Living longer, obviously, is not enough. We know that. Today, though, we're going to spend our time talking about female hormones, and um, we're going to go over the basics. I don't know where everybody is in their training, but we'll go over some of the basics. We'll go over the laboratory evaluation of the female hormone, the menopausal patient. And then I'm going to take you through some of the other things that I do in my practice that looks at the metabolic pathways of these hormones, which I think and have come to understand is the most important part of the hormone replacement. And then hopefully we'll have time for some case histories. So the big controversy, you all know, started in 2002 with the Women's Health Initiative. And basically the, at the conclusion of that study, they said, you know, hormones aren't good for women. They increase the risk of heart disease. They increase the risk of stroke. They increase the risk of breast cancer, DVTs, and women shouldn't take hormones. So, but we have come to understand that that study had many, many flaws, including the population that they looked at. So two-thirds of these women were over 65, um, and of the ones that were younger, only 12% or so had symptoms that were less enough that they would agree to be in a placebo group. They were obese women, two-thirds were obese, um, they were smokers, they had high blood pressure, and then some of these women had been on hormones before coming into the study for unknown periods of time. And then some of the placebo women, treated women, started hormones during the study. So the studies had a lot of flaws, including which the, the hormones that they chose to use to study. And now, many years later, now five years later, in 2007, we started to see headlines change. And it was, the, the tone was, well, maybe, you know, we misinterpreted the data and hormones aren't so bad. And as a matter of fact, um, you know, maybe they're good for women and it depends on how early you start these hormones. And, and we kept seeing these in uh, New, New England Journal of Medicine. They came out and they looked at the calcification of the um, arteries and they said that it, putting women on hormones early on in menopause actually decreased that by 60%. So again, different conclusions from that data. Same thing with the brain. You know, first they said it didn't do anything for the brain, and now they say, no, putting women on estrogen seems to be neuroprotective. So if we decide that it's a good idea to replace these women with hormones, then what? What kind of hormones are we going to use? And are bioidentical hormones safer? And what are they? And et cetera. So ACOG comes out and says in 2005, Absolutely, there's no scientific evidence that supports the effectiveness or the safety of these compounded bioidentical hormones. The North American Menopause Society, they say the same thing. They say that the evidence suggests that although individualized hormone products may decrease some symptoms, it seems that these bioidentical hormones have no proven advantage. 2008. They're revising their, their statement a little bit. And now they say, OK, it's OK to use these hormones, but you use them for women with severe symptoms in menopause. Well, the FDA has gotten involved in it. And you guys might have heard about some of their um, statements that have come out. But they've actually sent letters to a number of pharmacies and um, told them to stop making claims about the safety and the effectiveness of their so-called bioidentical hormones, and bioidentical hormones shouldn't even be used, and we're creating false and misleading information. And they've, they've further come out and said that they're not any safer or effective than the natural, than the FDA-approved drugs, and um, they consider the term bioidentical to be, to be false and misleading. World Health Organization, A4M, they believe differently. They think it's a good thing and that in the future it may define the safety of hormone treatment. There's some alternative medicine journals that come out and make statements that they think they're safer as well, but time will tell. But what is the data on it? 
So are bioidentical estrogens safer than conjugated estrogens? The answer is certainly when you compare it to, to Premarin, the answer is clearly yes. One of the major um, metabolites of Premarin is this 4 hydroxy uh, oquinone and that is a very, very potent, strong metabolite that absolutely is 30 times more potent than any metabolite in any bioidentical hormone, and it's very cytotoxic. So here we have evidence comparing bioidentical estrogens, estrogens that have the same chemical makeup that our own natural hormones have, comparing it to Premarin. And, and clearly, it's more dangerous looking at the Premarin. Another study showed, again, with this 4 hydroxy that not only is it more potent, but the kinds of DNA damage it does are, is much different than even with bioidentical hormones. So there's four different mechanisms that these, these potent metabolites um, affect on the DNA. And again, the evidence seems clear that when you're looking at bioidentical hormones versus Premarin, the evidence, to me, seems fairly clear. However, does that mean that bioidentical hormones are not genotoxic? And the answer to that is no. Both, both all estrogens have the capacity to be genotoxic and to just feel safe putting a woman on a bioidentical hormone and not consider the metabolic pathways, I think is a disservice. I'm just going to briefly look at the three types of estrogen. Um, so estrone is E1, that's the estrogen that we make in menopause in our fat cells. There are products that you can give back all three. My personal preference is never to use triest or three different estrogens because women don't need estrone. So estrone, uh, triest is typically 80% estriol, 10% estradiol, and 10% estrone. But I don't think there's any reason to give a woman in menopause back estrone. Estradiol, 17 beta estradiol, that's just a predominant estrogen. That's what you produce before you go into menopause, and it has a number of functions in the body that are important. And then there's estriol, and this is like the safest of all of the estrogens. Um, it does have both estrogen and antiestrogenic activity, um, and we we hold bioidentical hormones out to be safer because we're using predominantly estriol, but estriol has estrogenic activities, as we'll see. But in this small study, it did show, um, it did increase uh, endometrial hyperplasia. So again, you know, can you just feel safe giving a woman estriol and mostly estriol and say, that's it, we're good, you know, everything's safe? I don't think so.